Rabbi Jonathan, we were going to do a little bit of uh, learning on the Paraso Passover Seder um, again, and it's wonderful to welcome you to uh, teach with us a little bit. Um, I have a really strong recollection of being a child at the Passover Seder, and we would open the door for Elijah, and Elijah would come in, and I can physically see the cup of wine going down and somebody going glug, 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 glug. It's probably because I had an overactive uh, imagination as a child, child, but this is a very strong recollection. And we were going to talk a little bit about Elijah and opening the door to let in the prophet Elijah at the Passover said there and the importance of that symbol. Well, that's a great memory to start with. And let's begin on a lighter note. You, Nikki, my wife, which she says that every single year her father managed to empty Elijah's cup without anybody ever seeing him do it. A real feat. So there you are. You must have been at that Seder. And then one year we called one of our baby guinea pigs, Elijah. And every year when we opened the door, Elijah, the guinea pig would come in, which is a little bit of a cheat. Um, but on a more serious level, the closing and opening doors, I think, is a very goes very deep into the into the Seder and also where we are with lockdown. The Torah tells us that uh, the children of Israel were to be enclosed indoors during the night of that last terrible plague. Mm -hmm. I won't allow the plague to come into your house to smite you. And that's something we've been so terrified of. And it, and it hasn't always worked for people. I'm very sort of cognizant of that, this, this Pesach. But we've sort of been protecting ourselves, isolating, sheltering. We've developed a whole vocabulary of being carefully behind closed doors. And there's something very, very, very significant about being able to open doors. And I'm hoping that it's not just symbolic, that we'll be able increasingly to open doors in our homes, our synagogues, our society, this Pesach. And there's two points really where it comes. One of them is a very, is about sharing. It's about giving. It's um, really, I don't think we do it, but we should really open our, our doors at the beginning of the Seder when we say all who are hungry, come and eat, come and share the Seder, which is, which is, you know, how many of us are not going to have the people there we usually had at our Seder? Pretty much all of us. I've talked to people who are going to be completely alone. Um, many, many people won't be with that, you know, the family. We were usually 50 or 60 in this room I'm sitting in now. And last year it was Libby and me, it was the two of us. Um, so opening the doors to welcome and bring in and be together, that's just huge because... Pesach is also the sim it's festival of solidarity. We, we don't seek freedom on our own. We seek it for everyone. Mm. And then Elijah, towards the end, go on. Sorry, Rabbi Oliver, I interrupted you. No, I was going to ask you exactly that question about how then Elijah features in this symbolism, both of opening the door and also how Elijah takes us to a vision of, of hope and better days. Well, I think exactly as you've said. So the beginning is to, to be together. And then there's the question of the journey. And Seder night marks the start of the journey, but, but not its completion. We're setting out towards Sinai. And from Sinai, we're wandering in the desert. And in fact, I think in many respects, Jude Judaism is a religion of being on the way, open to what happens. Moses dies on the border, not in the promised land. And the Torah ends at the border. So we, we're always trying to travel towards a better and a more perfected world. And Elijah symbolizes that. On Shabbat HaGadol, which this day, this year is going to be the Shabbat, literally the morning before Seder night, we're going to say, God says, I'm sending you Elijah the prophet before the great day of God. So there's this heralding of the move towards redemption. And then we've got to work out, well, redemption is a great word, but what's it actually mean? Greater social justice, less inequality, a better a better appreciation of those we depend on, a different kind of society, a different relationship to nature as well. These are the things that Elijah means to me. Mm. And Eli Elijah is also this character of great mobility, perhaps chosen because he sits uh, in, in a biblical sense, he has this capacity to move between worlds or mo move around. And then he becomes the tooth fairy of Judaism and the tooth fairy of Seder, that he can be everywhere all at one time. And and, and in, in our home and in many homes, he's almost a comical figure because, uh, because of the fact that he can be in all of these houses at the same time. And, uh, and yet, we, he's also one of the songs that we sing to Sadie when um, she goes to sleep at night, that his, the image of Elijah and even the folk songs associated with the character Elijah 
are songs of real hope for a better world. Uh, t t tell us just another word of, about that aspect of hope that, co that comes to close the Seder, and uh, then we'll uh, bid each other uh, farewell and hug Sameach. So, you're, you're right, Elijah is many things. In, in, in the biblical narratives, Elijah is quite a stern figure, a, mm. a zealous figure, quite frightening. But, but mm. in folklore, he becomes a figure, of, I think, above all of affection, an affectionate mm. fan. And the person who doesn't give up and the person who cares about everybody and opens the doors and says, come with me on the journey. And I just end with a story that Elijah was exhausted from all his travels one Seder night and sat down on a bench. And there was somebody else there looking really sprightly on the bench. And Elijah says to this guy, what do you do for a living? He said, well, I'm a thief and I never give up. I'm always planning my next job. And from that, Elijah thought, well, if a thief doesn't give up, I'll plan my next job. I'll go to the next house. I'll welcome them. I'll take their hand and carry them on what's on the journey. Rabbi Oliver, wishing you Chag Sameach and your family and Elijah open doors and open hearts. Amen. Lovely to learn with you. Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach.